man, it's cold out here. <laughs> it is, it was 25 degrees this morning. I got hand warmers in. I actually went and sat in the deer stand, froze my butt off. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about drilling a well and how deep you should drill a well. We're gonna talk about that. I'll talk about the difference between a shallow well and a deep well. I'll give you some tips because I've had to deal with wells the past few years. We've got a shallow well at the beach house, which is only about that wide. I've got a board well out here, which is 24 inches or more wide. And I've got two, now I've got two deep wells that are close to 600 feet each. So I'll go over a few things about those. So here we go. Hey guys, so if you want the quick answer, the quick answer when you're dealing, when you're drilling a deep well, it's always better to go deeper. And why is that? It's not necessarily that the water's gonna change a whole lot. It's not necessarily that you're gonna find more water, as, as an example out here, but you have more reserve. And what do I mean by that? So if you're using, most of these deep wells are about a six inch pipe, that like they drill down a six inch hole. Well, for every foot they go down, you have approximately one and a half gallons of water. So think about that. So if you go down 100 feet, you have 150 gallons of water. Go down 200 feet, you got 300 gallons in that pipe. So the fact that you don't have 20 gallons a minute is not that big of a deal for the average household. I've got in this one, I'll give you the numbers in a minute, but I have hundreds of gallons of reserve water down there. So we'd have to take 20 showers, run all the faucets, run water the lawn, do everything before that actually depleted out. Now it would take a little bit of time to fill back up, but it's the reserve amount that I really focus on. So that's what I told these guys out here. They hit, I've got, I've got poor water out here. I've got rock at about 100 feet. And on my first well, it was only about two gallons a minute. And we run the house perfect off that. Why? Because it's 600 feet deep. So think about that. So my pump is 50 feet off the bottom and my water level is probably 20, 30 feet from the top. So, you know, I may have 700 gallons of reserve water inside that my old my old well here which is actually fairly new i wanted a backup well and the reason being is is if this well ever failed i mean it takes it can take you a month to get a well driller lined up get it all set if you have to get permits whatever you have to do so i wanted to have a backup well already drilled so we drilled another one over here same thing i'm only at about three or four gallons per minute on this one but the same thing i'm six I, we went down 600 feet which means i've got 700 to something gallons of reserve water in that tube that I have to use up. So deeper is better, not necessarily because of the quality of water, but because of the reserve amount. You may not hit a big aquifer down there. You may not hit that 10, 20, 30 gallons a minute type aquifer like we have here. We're just going through rock, there's cracks, there's fissures, there's all kinds of little water that's in infiltrating that, that, um, that well down here. So yes, deeper is better when you're doing that, in my opinion. Next, I'll also address this. I actually went up here, I'll show you the well drilling, and I talked about this. The big expense is not really drilling. You know, maybe it's $12 a foot or whatever you pay, $14 a foot. An extra 50 or 100 feet is not that much money in comparison to the overall well project. In other words, getting the two trucks out here, getting the labor out here, getting the people, inserting the pump, wiring it up, doing it. There's a whole bunch of money that's tied up. The drilling part, adding an extra 100 feet is not that much. So let's say you're at $12 a foot and you go down an extra 100, that's only $1,200 on top of your overall well, which is quite expensive to be honest. So don't be penny wise and pound foolish when it comes to drilling. If you hit water and you're at like three, four or five gallons and they're at 300 feet, have them go another 100 feet. It's like the guy said, you'll hear him. He said, you've already got the equipment here. That's part of the biggest part of the expense. You've got the trucks here, you've got the drills. We're sitting here drilling. You might as well go ahead and push it down another 100 feet. So I'll show you them drilling. I'll take you over maybe and show you uh, my, my board well over here. We actually found an old board well hidden back in the woods over here. I don't know if it's ever been used. There's not a pump in it. He may have had that over there for his livestock. What else we got going on? Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a cabin update. I'll walk over and give you a cabin update. The plumbers came here and we plumbed in. Um, the plumbing is done and I got a sheet rocker guy coming today to give me a quote on my sheet rock in there. So we're getting close to finished on the basic stuff in there. So anyways, here we go. 
A little bit chilly today, huh? Yeah. So how deep did we get yesterday? 505 feet. 505 feet. And what do you think the water was, or you don't know yet? Three gallons a minute. Three gallons a minute. Yeah. That uh, water level should be pretty high. So what do you, what do you, what are, what are the plans today? I mean, it's, it's really up to you, whatever you want to do, drilling by the foot. I mean, if you my, want to go deeper with it, we can go deeper, or we can stop it. Or... My philosophy is so this. My philosophy is, is you're better off, I think, to go deeper, have a better reserve, and maybe get lucky and hit maybe another, That's, know, that's true. And I, like I say, I mean, some people, you know, they, they got a budget, and they, they say, well, this is far as we're going, but, you know. See, and that's where... <laughs> right now, while you're drilling, it, this is the time to do it while the truck's set up. Right. This, you can get to it. An extra 50 feet is, is nothing compared to the overall cost, including the pump, the wiring, the trenching, and all that other stuff. That's you exactly know what right. I mean? That's exactly right. So what I'm saying is, is I'm fine going, let's go another 50, 75. Let's just drill her down. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. What's a what would be here's a good here's a good question. What would be a good water level? You're talking about how high it comes up. Yeah. Well, I mean, normally, it's uh, fifty foot maybe average. You know. Okay. I expect this one right here is gonna be high. One thing, would you pond down there in your lake? Yeah. The height for that water level. That's probably where this is. So that's the target bit. That one simply opens up the hole for this big one. And then this one gets attached. And that's the one that actually can go through all this rock, granite and crap. leave them alone let them do their work i just wait for the phone call we hit water at x feet and we have this many gallons 
Okay, so they're all done. They're out of here. This is the day after. I'm going to take you up there. I'll show you. But I want to stop in and show you my original well and how we're going to tie this new well eventually into this other one up here. Okay, so my son Ryan and I, my son Ryan and I, yes, <laughs> we built this well house. It actually came out kind of cute. We wanted just something kind of cute here. So this is the original well. This is 600 feet, and this runs about two gallons a minute. Now it goes down and gets tied underground to the house over here. But I also tied it into the cabin, the new cabin here. Inside here, I actually have a pretty, pretty good filtration system. Sleeping bag. This day is pretty warm. Now, if you'll notice, I have it open to the ground. So the ground heat comes up, keeps us fairly warm. We insulated it really well. And then this is my filtration system. I have a pre-filter, carbonized tank filter, post filter, and a UV filter here. So I have some of the cleanest water in the world because not only does it come from 600 feet down, it runs through that filter system. And then under the sink in the kitchen, I have another triple filter. I have another triple filter under the sink in the kitchen. So, I mean, super, super clean water. Now what we're gonna do, this is this well here. The other well is 35 feet off the back of that barn over there. And eventually we're gonna trench it and tie it in here so that if need be, if this well ever fails, I've got a secondary well. Now, someone was asking if I irrigate the garden with this. I don't. We actually run a high pressure pump from the pond up to the fields to irrigate the fields. And then while we're irrigating the fields, I actually water the garden. If I need to use a little bit of this water, I can for the garden, it's not a problem. Same thing with the orchards, but we had to clear this area out. And you can see it makes quite a bit of mess. You can see that this is, oh, this is the rock. So this is the rock they grind through. It smells like rock. It smells like granite. This is the red clay. This is the overburden. And then when they start hitting the rock, they're drilling to the rock. And then this is what's left. What's left is basically you've got a PVC cap here. pretty good so I've got water 19 feet from the surface here running all the way down to 600 that's a lot of reserve water it's a lot of reserve water so there's too much going on with the cabin really to put it on this video but I'll just do a real quick walk through now if you don't know we ordered this cabin bare inside basically except spray foamed so I've had electrical run to it uh, the electricians came and did all my wiring for all the lights and everything else plumbers came yesterday they finished up all the rough plumbing. Sheetrock guy came this morning, he's getting me a quote on doing all the sheetrock. Then we're gonna finish it off. I've got some, up under that tarp, I've got tongue and groove pine. We're gonna do one wall on tongue and groove pine. I gotta stain that. We'll put that up. The floors are already in. We have to sand and stain the floors. We're gonna be using some of our old timbers from the 1797 uh, tobacco barn. We'll be accenting it in here, but let me just, give you a little look since I told you I'd give you a peek so it's coming along this will be a little kitchenette and you got all your plumbing lined in here you got all your can lights pancake lights are going up here I have a ceiling fan with the light up here another light for the little kitchenette over here this wall will all be tongue and groove pine here we'll stain that the same color as this track door this track door, barn door rolls over. You have a toilet, little sink, mirror, light, 36 inch shower with a rain head, full size water heater. Basically, this is almost like a little guest house so that if someone comes up to visit, they can stay here. My brother comes up and hunts. He can actually stay here if he wants. He can stay a whole week in here and actually it's pretty comfortable in here, to be honest, pretty nice. Even Ryan, my son said, he said, we're gonna move in there. I said, uh, with that pond view, I said it's $10,000 a month. <laughs> He'll rethink that. Anyways, guys, I'll put some of this these projects on video. I got a bunch more videos coming out. I've just been so busy trying to get all this stuff done. I apologize for not putting more up. I'll talk to you later. Doc.